All right, let's review. DNA is the code of life, and the molecules of life are proteins. The central dogma of molecular biology states that DNA codes for RNA and RNA codes for proteins. Transcription is the synthesis of messenger RNA from DNA. Where transcription is the synthesis of mRNA from DNA, translation is a process of synthesizing proteins from the code within mRNA. In other words, it's the process of generating proteins from the genetic information, from the architect's drawing board to the building. Let's take a closer look. But first, let's watch this really awesome video. The innermost workings of how a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. This is what Francis Crick called the central dogma of modern biology. How DNA makes protein. It starts with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene. It's these that trigger the first phase of the process, reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. The gene is the length of DNA stretching away to the left. Everything's ready to roll. Three, two, one. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to make an exact copy of the A's, C's, G's, and T's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related nucleic acid known as U. You are watching this process, called transcription, in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes away from the nucleus and into the outer part of the cell. Then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of another molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory called a ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. They all carry a specific three-letter code that will be read by the machine. Now we come to the heart of the process. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code for each amino acid is read off, three letters at a time, and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecule. When the right transfer molecule plugs in, the amino acid it carries is added to the growing protein chain. Again, you are watching this in real time. And after a few seconds, the assembled protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. Yeah, that's pretty cool, wasn't it? Well, in transcription, the strand of DNA that is used to synthesize mRNA is known as the template strand. Whereas the non-template strand, 
or coding strand matches the sequence of RNA. However, it doesn't match it exactly as RNA has uracil, U, instead of thiamine, T. The nucleotides of RNA are known as ribonucleic triphosphates, or NTPs. These nucleotides bond to the template strand via hydrogen bonds after the DNA molecule opens up. And then, those nucleotides are bonded together with phosphodiester bonds, just like DNA is bonded. RNA has an enzyme that synthesizes RNA from the template strand of DNA, and it happens a lot like DNA polymerase, except for the fact that it doesn't require a primer before transcription begins. Bacteria have a single RNA polymerase, where eukaryotes have three different enzymes. Before transcription can begin, it has to be initiated. The first thing that happens is a protein called sigma binds with an RNA polymerase, and this thing collectively is known as a holoenzyme. Once the sigma protein attaches to the DNA molecule, it serves to guide the RNA polymerase down the template strand. The sigma protein recognizes and binds to what is deemed the promoter sequence. The promoter sequence is a specific group of base pairs. Once the sigma binds to the DNA, transcription can begin. And there's several different sigma. Each is unique and can either initiate the synthesis of a very specific gene, or in some cases, they can initiate the synthesis of several different genes. Let's look at the steps of initiation. The sigma protein first opens up the DNA's double helix at a promoter section of the DNA strand. Then, the template strand of the DNA is threaded through the RNA polymerase. Incoming RNA nucleotides come through a channel in the sigma protein and pair with the complementary bases of the DNA's template strand. At this point, the RNA polymerase is functional and begins to work. And once that happens, the sigma disconnects from the DNA chain. This defines the beginning of the elongation phase of transcription. Elongation in transcription is fairly straightforward. The RNA polymerase zips along the open DNA molecule, matching up complementary RNA base pairs from the template strand of the open DNA. The elongation phase of transcription continues until it reaches a termination signal in the DNA's template strand. The mRNA molecule is then separated from the DNA molecule, and the template strand and the non-template strand of DNA reattach to become double helix. What I described was exactly how RNA is processed in bacteria. However, in eukaryotic organisms, there's one difference. That process produces an immature version of mRNA. Therefore, before translation, another step is required. In eukaryotes, pre-RNA is made of regions of mRNA that code for amino acids. These are known as exons. And it also has regions of mRNA that don't code for amino acids. These are known as introns. So before mRNA can be functional, the introns must be removed in a process known as RNA splicing. While transcription is the process of creating mRNA from DNA, translation is the process of converting the genetic information of mRNA into proteins. Let's see how that works. In bacteria, translation and transcription happen simultaneously. Ribosomes and proteins are floating right next to the DNA. So in bacteria, the ribosomes begin the process of translation before the RNA polymerase terminates the transcription process. Another difference in bacteria is that many ribosomes are working simultaneously to synthesize different proteins. In eukaryotes, translation and transcription are separated. mRNA is synthesized in the nucleus during transcription. The mRNA leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pore and travels to a ribosome in the cytoplasm, where the process of translation occurs. Most ribosomes are attached at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. However, there are several ri ribosomes within the cytoplasm itself. In addition to mRNA, another important RNA molecule is the transfer RNA also known as tRNA. tRNA is the molecule that bridges the genetic code with a specific protein. Each transfer molecule is attached to a specific amino acid, and each amino acid has three base pairs attached to the opposite end of it. At the ribosome, the three base pairs of the tRNA join up with a complement of the three base pairs of the mRNA, 
So the complementary base pairs of the transfer RNA are known as an anti-codon, whereas the triplet code of the messenger RNA is known as a codon. Each anticodon of tRNA links with a specific amino acid, and it's combined with its complementary codon of mRNA at the ribosome. And then the amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds into a growing peptide chain. Ribosomes are made up of another RNA, ribosomal RNA, and proteins. And ribosomes have two structures. The small subunit holds the mRNA in place during translation while the large subunit is where the peptide bonds form. And the large subunit has three distinct chambers, A, P, and E. In general, the function of a ribosome is to synthesize proteins. Let's see how it works. The first thing that happens is an amino acid connected to a transfer RNA enters the ribosome at the A site. As a second tRNA molecule comes into the A site, the first tRNA molecule moves over three base pairs and a peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids. As a third tRNA molecule comes into the ribosomal complex, the other two tRNAs move three bases and the oldest tRNA molecule exits the ribosome at the E site. Just remember, A, P, E, ape. That's the big picture. Let's take a closer look at the process of translation. Translation is initiated when mRNA binds to a small subunit of the ribosome. The mRNA has a special section of it right before the start codon that the ribosome recognizes, known as the ribosome binding site. Translation begins with the start codon on the mRNA. Connected to the tRNA of the start codon is an amino acid called F-MET. Once the F-MET tRNA binds to the small subunit of the ribosome, the large subunit of the ribosome binds to the small unit, and translation is ready to begin. In elongation, the first anticodon tRNA attached to an amino acid attaches itself to a complementary codon in the A site of the large subunit of the ribosome. Second, a peptide bond forms at the P site. Next, the whole ribosome complex moves down three base pairs. The tRNA in the A site moves to the P site, and the tRNA in the P site moves to the E site, and the tRNA in the E site leaves the ribosomal complex. This is known as translocation. Translation is terminated by one of three stop codons. Once the ribosome encounters one of these stop codons, it causes a specific protein known as a release factor to enter the ribosome, and it causes the release of the polypeptide chain. Also at this time, the large ribosome separates from the small subunit, and the protein goes about doing its business.